Okay, so in this class, we're going to meet the area accumulation function and the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Um, in the interest of full disclosure, um, fundamental theorem of calculus part two is sort of a funny and contrived theorem. It's not really interesting for its practical application, like we don't use it that often, but it illustrates a surprising connection between calc one and calc two, between derivatives and area under a curve. Okay, so first let's review. On the left is a derivative function f of t. So using techniques we've learned, we want to sketch an antiderivative capital F of t. So little f is representing the derivative, capital F represents the antiderivative. We do a rough sketch. We're just going to think about increasing, decreasing, and concavity. All right, so we're going to assume f of negative 4 is 0. So I can put that point. Oh, I need to align this. Okay, so f of negative 4 is 0. Capital F of negative 4 is 0. All right, so from there, I know that when the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. And when the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So I'm going to make some notes on my derivative function. So this derivative function is positive, which means that f on this interval, f is increasing. And then in between negative 2-ish and 2-ish, f is decreasing. Sorry, capital F, the antiderivative, because the derivative is negative. And then after 2-ish, capital F increasing again, because the derivative is positive above the x-axis. OK. Now, when the derivative is decreasing, right, this function itself is decreasing, it's downhill. When the derivative is decreasing, that means that the second derivative is positive, which means that the function itself is concave up. So from here to the left, f is concave up. And then here, my derivative function is increasing, which means that the function f is, oops, I had that backwards. This one's concave up. This one, f is concave down, right? f prime is decreasing, which means f double prime is negative, which means f is concave down. Over here, it's concave up. So I've got some notes about where f, capital F, antiderivative, is increasing and decreasing in its concavity. All right, so from negative infinity to almost negative 2, f is increasing and concave down. So starting at negative 4 here until just about here, I'm increasing and concave down. OK, then from negative 2 to 0, f is decreasing and still concave down. So negative 2 to 0, it's decreasing, still concave down. So maybe like that, decreasing, concave down. Then from 0 to 2-ish, f is um, still decreasing, but concave up. So that's until about a little after 2, decreasing, concave up. And then after 2, f is increasing and concave up. So like that. So there's my antiderivative. OK, so that's one way to sketch an antiderivative. You can just do a really rough sketch based on the derivative being um, positive and negative and increasing and decreasing. That can tell you about um, the antiderivative. All right, next, we're going to create a table of values for what we will call the cumulative area function. So c of x, c for cumulative area. The function is defined like this, OK? So c of negative 3 is the area between the above left curve and the x-axis from negative 4 to 3. So this curve up here, 
which I'm going to erase my notes because I'm going to need to draw some stuff. So C of negative 3 is the area between negative 4 and negative 3. So it's this area. Whatever that number is, that's C of negative 3. C of negative 2 is the area between the curve and the x-axis from negative 4 to negative 2. So in pink, from negative 4 to negative 2, I've got this area. So the pink is C of negative 2. So I'm accumulating area from negative 4 to the right, to whatever value I say. Okay, so um, a shorthand way of saying this um, is to use an integral. C of negative 3 is the integral from negative 4 to negative 3 of the function f of t dt. C of negative 2 is the integral from negative 4 to negative 2 of f of t dt. And in general, C of x is the integral from negative 4 to whatever x value I give you of f of t dt. Negative 4 is completely arbitrary right now. We're going to see some interesting stuff about what that number, bottom number is as we work through this. So I want to fill out this table, um, approximating areas by using trapezoids and triangles. Um, and once, and we're going to do this all together, and we should be able to verify that our final C of 4 is about 3. Okay, so C of negative 4. It's going to be a bunch of work down here. This is the integral from negative 4 to negative 4 of f of t dt. Okay, so how much area is under the curve between negative 4 and negative 4? Zero. Good. All right, so my next one, the negative 3, this is the integral. Actually, let me write it out. C of negative 3. That's the integral from negative 4 to negative 3 of f of t dt. you got to be careful because the units, um, the scale on the y-axis is 2. Yeah. So let's just break this up. We've got, um, we're going to use a trapezoid to estimate that area. So this is 4 by 1. So the bottom here is 4. And then the triangle, this is 1 by 2, 4, 6. I don't know, 6.5 6 6 maybe, 6.5. Um, so it's 1 by 6.5. Half of that is 3 and a quarter. So what? I know. I used it. I used that, didn't I? I said 2, 4, 6. So this area is about seven and a quarter. Everybody see that? Okay, so that is my C of negative three. Seven and a quarter. Okay, C of negative two. That's the integral from negative four to negative two of f of t dt. So I already know the area from negative 4 to negative 3, so I just need to add the area from negative 3 to negative 2. So I'm going to carefully draw some triangles here. Area under the x-axis we treat as negative. So this triangle is like, I don't know, 0.75 by 4. So 2 times 0.75 is like 1 and a half. And then this little tiny chunk here, that's like a quarter by 1. So half of that would be an eighth. So we're going to call that 1.4. Eighth is pretty close to a tenth. So this green area, 
we're going to call 1.4. Oh, and then I have to add it to the seven and a quarter. You're right. Sorry. Seven and a quarter plus 1.4, um, 8.65. Did I do that right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, now... C of negative 1 is the integral from negative 4 to negative 1. So I already know the integral from negative 4 to negative 2. I just need to add the area from negative 2 to negative 1. So I'm going to do that with um, a trapezoid. Actually, not a trapezoid, it's like a, it is a trapezoid, yeah. Okay, so the area of this trapezoid, um, trapezoid in general is one half base one plus base two times the height. Your bases are um, these two parallel sides. And then my height is going to be one. All right, so my base 1 looks like 4, base 2 looks like 1, 1 half times 1 plus 4, my height is 1, so that's 5 halves or 2 and a half. Two 2.5. So then I have to add that to the 8.65. So uh, 9, nope. I should subtract it because it is below the x-axis. You're on fire today. Okay, so subtract 2.5 from 8.65. So subtract 2, you get 6.65, and then a half, and you get 6.15. All right, negative 1 to 0. I have to figure that out to be able to evaluate C of 0. Negative 4 to 0, F of T, T. Okay, so i got to figure out the area from negative 1 to 0. And I am just going to tell you the areas from this point on, approximate values. That one is uh, about... 4.7, and I'm just going to do all the areas, and then we'll add them up. This one's also 4.7, symmetric. And, oh, this is nice because all these are symmetric. Two and a half. Point four, and then this last one, seven and a quarter. Okay, so I just add these six point one five plus the area from negative one to zero, so I have to subtract four point seven. Six point one five minus four point seven is one point four five. Then I have to subtract four point seven again. Negative three and a quarter. Then I have to subtract two and a half. And I get negative five point seven five. 
and then I have to add 1.4. negative 4.35 and lastly add seven and a quarter so 2.9 so that checks out with that c of four is supposed to be approximately three okay. didn't come out exactly because we did some we definitely had to do some estimating of y values there Okay, so um, once you filled in the whole table, blah, blah, blah. Okay, go ahead and start your activities.